What up, everybody? This is Ray Dangs, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. You already knew that, but what you didn't know about I Bet is a new distribution company called Two Loss Distribution. They're the most technologically advanced distributor in the world. They distribute your music to more stores than any distributor out there, and they only charge you $3 a month. Yep, $3 a month. And they don't charge you any money to collect your royalties, so you get 100% of your royalties. Y'all know how some of them distribution companies be asking for, you know, it's distribute with us, but they take 20%. These guys don't take any of that. They charge $3 a month to distribute all your music. And if you use the code GODS, which is on being the bottom of the screen, when you add your discount code, you get three months free. So if you're looking for distribution, you need distribution, you're looking for the best distribution company to work with, Two Loss is the fastest growing distribution company out there. Mess with them. Tell them Ray sent you. You will get some money off. It's your girl Tamara, a.k.a. Girl from Harlem. And this is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And it's your cousin Juju. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the God Show. That's the first time we did Juju. <laughs> Juju gave himself a moniker. He's like the bad cousin that you know. When I you love see it. him walk Listen. through the door, you're about to have a time. <laughs> no, he's the cousin. Let me tell you who he is. He's the cousin that family is from the hood, but his family moved him to the suburbs. Oh. So he's, he comes with in the glasses on with intelligence, but he talks like a nigga. He's just that cousin. <laughs> and today we have a legend. I, I want to call him an A-Town legend, but I think he's an A-Town and a Philly legend. I remember I called him and asked him what he represented. He's all Philly. Uh, one of the, I don't know how to describe him besides he feels like Atlanta's Dr. Dre that doesn't want to be Dr. Dre. Mm. He's the guy that everybody calls for beasts. He's like, I, they call him the wizard. And he finally decided to show up on the show. And we are happy to have him. He's also the tech CEO now. We're going to get into all that. Everybody make noise for Don Cannon. Woo! The Cannon. Yes. What's up? What's up? That was a really good drop oh, man, we, I, I'm known 20 years. Man. Yeah, brother. Don yeah, Cannon. We, yeah. we came up. I saw I it. I know you I was the saw original the voice behind the drop. Nah, nah, nah. No, we no, getting no, it. No, Cannon. Really I know the whole story. When he started, it was from a Madden game or something like that, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember That's all of that. Say. I was hanging out with Biddy back then. <laughs> I'm going to let the fans, you know, do Come that. up with their own. Yeah. But let's welcome Don Cannon to the blue couch. Yes, let's go. Yes, sir. So, Tamira, let's go. All right. So, you actually, I think. This is like a combination. You made like one of my favorite songs. It's a combination of like Ray and Juju. It's um, Go Crazy, right? Mm. So um, when you make a song like that for two big names from New York and the South, how do you make a beat that you think will represent both of them or even come up with a production that you think would go good with both of them? That's a good question. Uh, where I started was the East Coast. You know, and I came to Atlanta. I had to figure out where I f was fitting in Atlanta. And at that time, it was a lot of trap music. And I was like, yo, how do I become different? What sound can I do? So I kind of like incorporated the East Coast sound with a down South kind of sound. And uh, I just went for like people like Tip and Jeezy and those guys that actually knew how to do different bounces. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I need to do some up tempos with some of these guys because I knew Tip always did them. Uh, Jeezy hadn't had none at the time. And I was like, man, this is what's going to make him his mark when he's, you know, going to New York going to Philadelphia, he's going to Chicago, going to West Coast. He'll have something to go that resonates with everybody. And that was the sound. You know, and Jay-Z wound up uh, being part of it later after he heard it. He presented to uh, Jay-Z, and Jay-Z was like, I need to get on that. What did that feel like for you? Was that like a moment for you? Or? Yeah, that was a moment because as I was coming up, like I don't know if anybody know the story, but when I was coming up, it was, it was super hard to, you know, be in Atlanta and be from – you know, up north, That's you know, they had this slogan when I was DJing. It was like, if you don't like the A, fly away. You I, know what I mean? So I that never was hear like. That before. That's oh, that, a little mean. That's a, a goodie mouth song. Yeah, that was a big, that was a big thing. And, you know, some of the times I was DJing Visions and all the big parties for some of the celebrities, I was playing like Lean Back and some of them stuff in the club. And sometimes they look at me like, all right, oh. man, you got three, four more of these. <laughs> yeah, wrap, <laughs> you know? wrap up that New York stuff. You got, you got three more of these. <laughs> like, it, it was crazy. I'm so early in DJing in Atlanta that. When I was playing a up north, it was an up north set. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, how crazy that's it how, was. It didn't even like that no more. It's that's not, crazy. It was, it was, it was up an north up north set. set. I had 15 minutes in the classroom to get busy, and that was it. So I kind of like, you know, coming up and just trying to make it in Atlanta, I didn't know when I was going to be solidified as a producer. And I feel like when Jay-Z got on the record, that helped me. It's like, I'm supposed to be here. I feel like you're one of the, you're, we have one thing in common. You're really good at what you do. But I almost feel like you hate having to do it. I do sometimes. I do. 
because uh, because the when when people talk about you, by the way, your team does a great job. But I was in the studio with somebody, and I was asking about an artist, and I ain't gonna even say the name because I don't do that. But I was asked about an artist, and they, he was like, "Man, he he just he was the shit when he had Cannon. He just need Cannon." <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, why don't Cannon go hit him?" He was like, "Cannon don't give a fuck." <laughs> Cannon's like, "I'm not gonna chase him to make." And I'm like, "I feel like when you get so great at your job, you like." Bro, I'm not about to chase you. Yeah, it was to the help mastery. You. It's the mastery, yeah. bro. And you know, for a long time, that was my, you know, quote unquote line is I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I felt like when I got in these spaces where people didn't want to listen, I just walk away. Somebody else is going to beg me for that knowledge. So I'm just going to say, here, you deserve it. If you want to walk away from that, cool. You know so I mean? have a question bouncing off of that. Does, do you think that's what makes your label so successful? The fact that you, you are, it starts with the music with you? And Absolutely. With the music? Absolutely. Music is the number one rule in our buildings. Like, do you can you rap? Can you make beats? <laughs> can, can you sing? What can you do? What talent do you have that's gonna resonate for years? I'm always looking for somebody. It's, I'm tired of seeing uh, '90s music being played now, and we still love it like we did, we did then, and we're not having that same uh, feel with the music now. And in 20 years, we're not. You might not like it next year. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So Microwave. I want the one thing that, that just has to be in the building with me is if you can actually sing, if you can actually rap, like those are things that's going to last forever. Like you might not have a hit record, but she could sing her ass off. He could rap his ass off. The beats are still right there. So those are things I was looking for. You know, even the writers, like, can we pin records that's just not for today? Mm. You know what I mean? Can we pin records that's for the future? Like, can you make a wedding song? Can you make a happy birthday song? That's real. You know what I'm saying? Can you make an electric slide? It's 40 years old, 30 years old. You know what I'm saying? That's like, real. those, these are the things. Like, and I always tell people this, like, why, why does, why was uh, 50 Cent so successful? And I was like, first thing he did, he came out with was happy birthday song. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's crazy. That, it's going to be here forever. Yep. No matter where you go. So those are the things. Like, you could, you could do your in, in between time records and all that, but can you make a standard? That's what we call back in a standard that so, record's here forever. So let me ask you, in the I feel like you guys are in the top tier of artist development. I, I actually kind of think you guys might be better than most. And I'm gonna tell you Appreciate why. That. You're better than 95%. And let me tell you why. And it's no shade to the other 95% because you broke an artist, that's great. But most people break an artist by riding on the back of another artist. So I got this superstar, now I'm gonna break, I'm gonna bring this star, I'm gonna bring this star. Y'all didn't do that. Like y'all literally broke one separated from that, broke a whole nother artist another way. Like, what is y'all, what is y'all, I guess, pillars of artist development that y'all focus on when the artist wants to work with Generation Now? What up, everybody? This is Ray Dangs, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. You already knew that, but what you didn't know about, I bet, is a new distribution company called Two Lost Distribution. They're the most technologically advanced distributor in the world. They distribute your music to more stores than any distributor out there, and they only charge you $3 a month. Yep, $3 a month. And they don't charge you any money to collect your royalties, so you get 100% of your royalties. Y'all know how some of them distribution companies be asking for, you know, it's distribute with us but they take 20%. These guys don't take any of that. They charge $3 a month to distribute all your music and if you use the code GODS, which is on be on the bottom of the scene, screen when you add your discount code, you get 3 months free. So, if you're looking for distribution, you need distribution, you're looking for the best distribution company to work with, Two Loss is the fastest growing distribution company out there. Mess with them, tell them Ray sent you, you going to get some money off. So I'm going to start between 99, 2000, 2001. Me and Dron was trying to come up. We couldn't get one star to do anything for us. Not one tape, not one, nothing. Not a drop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I felt like that right there was our number one rule. It was like, yo, let's just build from the ground up. So mm -hmm. Make a seat, put a seat in, the, seat in the ground and take it upwards. And I think that's where, you know, when we start doing mixtapes like Gangsta Grills and some of my brands and even Trendsetter brands, we always went for people that needed the help or wanted to get to the next level, all of them. Anybody we did the tape with, for the most part, 95% was brand new artists. Like nobody knew about Jeezy. Wayne was trying to get into a rapping, rapping lane. He came from Squad Up and it was like, you know, I really rap, I'm a beast. How do we help? the world see that he's a beast. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, anybody, Yo Gotti, I always speak of him. Uh, 
Slim Thug at the time. He was bubbling in Houston, but didn't have the broad audience. It's just like, you know, we just kept working there. So I think that when we find new artists, one, who are you? What's your identity? Like you look at Lil Uzi Vert, uh, when we brought him around, it was like, there's no way a kid with purple hair were going to work. And that's when I knew it was going to work. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, because they don't know that I know how talented he is. You know what I'm saying? We brought Jack Harlow around, you know, some of the ill men or people came around like, oh, he looked like uh, Napoleon Dynamite. He ain't never going to be bigger than Eminem. He ain't never going to be this. And I was like, damn, y'all don't even know how talented homie is. I can't wait. I can't wait till y'all see. I remember he dropped the Dark Knight record or something. I remember I hit you. Like when he dropped that record, it's like, a, I don't, was it called Dark Knight? Dark Knight, yeah. And I hit you and I was like, yo, this kid is out of here. That was when it, yeah, I, I remember did. I hit I remember you and that. I was like, I yes, I was that. like, yo, this kid is out of here so when I saw that. Another one. Huh? And can't even, can't even remember this. I was one of the first people to book Jack Harlow at South by Southwest. Yeah, one thousand percent. For real? I was thousand one of the first percent. people to book him at South by. What was it about Jack that you liked? Uh, so when I first heard Jack was at KY Engineering Spot, uh, he had some records he sent over to us. So I was listening. I was like, it's jamming, but I got to meet him. I got to see if he really yes. can rap. But he never came to me. It, all, it went to Drum first because, you know, KY and it was the face. So Drum got a chance to bring it to us. We had a meeting with him. And then when we sat down with him, he had um, on that line, he said he brought his own little Metro, which was two for one. It was his own producer. Uh -huh. So they were sitting in the office. And then when we're talking to them, dude's vision, like he was talking to us, but it looks like he was looking past us. Mm. Like he was just, he knew everything. He knew his favorite movies. He knew where he wanted to be in two years, how he was going to do it. And he just needed somebody to help him get there. You know what I mean? And that was special for me because it's the first thing that, you know, uh, we call this game selfish. Like a lot of people find people as a main producer and produce them out. Yes. It's the first situation where I didn't have to produce. I could just oversee. Mm. I never wanted, it's all about the song and the artist to me. I never wanted to get in the way of that. Yep. So the first thing I did was, okay, let me hear and just kind of add, fine tune it, fine tune it. And that was my job. So I just watched them develop so much in a building and watched his look go from look to look. Watch his rap go rap to rap beat the beat and I'm like damn this dude is developing at a speed that I ain't never seen wow. no people develop I think you just touched on a major point too like the artist gave you a, the ability to develop them themselves like, like but, 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 artists, but they also but the, the, the most important thing of an artist is listening to this the most important thing is is that as great as canon is I can't tell you where you're supposed to end up that's right that's not my job that's I right, can absolutely. I can coach you how to get there that's right but Artists be like, I'm just talented. I need a shot. It ain't about being. The difference between talent and artists is artists know where they want to end up. That's right. Talent knows what they do. Yep. Like I can sing. I can rap. But an artist is like, I sing, I rap, but I'm going over there. Yep. That's where I want to end up. And that's when you become the gas in the car to get them there. But then at some point in time, they, you, can't, you can't guide them without them. Because eventually they'll turn on you. Yeah, you know I, that. I felt, like, I felt like any other, like you think Coach Pop. You think about um, uh, Phil Jackson. Most people don't look at these things, right? Like, you see Kobe dribbling. He dunks, does the air reversing. It's like, yo, Kobe's great. And you see Michael Jordan do the fadeaway. But you ever pay attention to the, to the times where they're at the three throw line and he runs and co and to the coach and he tells them what to do in his ear and they run back out there to do it? Yep. That's where I was at. Mm, it's mm. like Jack is going hoop and Uzi going hoop and then they come back like, coach, what I need to do? Okay, cool. I'm back in there. Those are the parts they don't see on a commercial breaks. You don't see when they run yeah. back and forth to the coach to get the word. Pop will be like, "Come here." They come over here and tell you know Tony Parker what to do. You know that, and then they'll go back on the floor. Those are things that I look at as myself. It's like I can be that person. I don't always have to be on the floor with them. But you also don't want to be yeah, like that's yeah, the thing. Like that, yeah. I don't think artists understand that. Like this is exciting for you. Yep. We almost twenty years in. Yep. This ain't exciting for us. The most exciting thing for us is meeting someone that wants to do it right. Yep. Oh my God, I could do this all day. The hard part is when someone thinks I'm here and it's like, bro, I'm trying to lead you to the, I'm trying to lead you to your promised land. I'm already comforted in mine. Yo, if I, when I get you there, it's not going to change too much about my life. Like at my life, I'm not going to move in a different house. Nothing, your life is going to change. Right. So you should be the one. Shut right. the fuck up. Right. Say, right. Show me how to do what you did. <laughs> right. That's the hardest part about this shit. Cause they be thinking that is like how you, how you never built something and you gonna come tell me how to build. When they do that, I'll be like, all right, show me. That's why I know you don't like it yeah. because that's why I know you. Cause when you hit that mastery level where you like, yep. bro, I know this shit better than everybody. 
and then you still got to sell somebody? Yep. That's like I always say, a fine chick, a bad chick has never walked into a club and said, can someone buy me a drink? That's real there talk. will always be a nigga that's there to buy her a drink. If she, and if they ain't buying you a drink, you're not as fine as you think you are. That's right. And that's so, for me, it's like, no, nothing is an answer. Right? <laughs> no answer is an answer. No answer is an answer, bro. No. <laughs> you are looking at it like, man, if the industry just gave me a shot, bro, you got a shot right now. Put something on Instagram. That's your shot. There you go. You got seven views. There you go. If those seven people didn't tell seven other people, your shit ain't that good. And here's the best part. I know how to make it better. Yep. But just listen to me. There you go. I don't have to, I don't want to sell you though. Bro, it's so my hard. Life, my life in a nutshell, bro. Come on. I already know that's why my I know you hate it. Because it's like, yeah. why do I have to convince you that, to help you win? That's the worst shit that we got to deal with in, this, in, in any bro, business, by bro, the way. Bro. Because people be having their own vision of what the win looks like. That's right. Like, man, I'm going to meet Cannon. He's going to give me a million dollars. We're going to drop my single. I'm going to go fucking platinum. And then I'm going to sell. I'm going to start acting. And it's like, nigga. Right. They're going to push the button. <laughs> yes. It's like, nigga. It's so different from that. <laughs> it's so different from that. Push the button. The button's pushed. The button is crazy. It's going to work. Magic is happening. Yeah. Bro, you fucking crazy. Bro, you're going to have to get out here and work and hustle and find a way to drive yourself to the top. Because I can't even push it. Because if Cannon come in here and tries to sell us something, everybody in here is like, he's only selling it because it's his. Yep. So he can't yep. sell it. Yep. He knows that. Yep. All I can do is put it out there. That's right. And hope that the people want it. And sometimes they be thinking it's you. It's not me, my nigga. It's you. I'm That's right. That's right. I got an artist now, Carvina, sing her ass off, bro. When I put when I bring her places, I never sell it. Mm. I could be here talking to Ron, like, I'm not about to sell it. I want to put her in front of you. I'm gonna walk outside. Yep. You're going to call me like, bro, what's going on? Yes. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I need. I don't, I will, I'll put all of them. I'll put anybody. If I bring Jack in here. Yo, rap, give me 36 bars real quick. We're going to do it. But that's how the legend gets built. That's it. That's, that's how, how the legend gets built. Like, here go the product. I, I'll be right back. Call and then, me. And then the more the juice bar. Yep. You call me. Yo, get this thing out. He's crazy. <laughs> and then it's like, Cannon did it again. Oh, my God. Can I want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear yeah, Cannon. Yeah. I want to hear Ray did it again. Yeah, I want to hear that, my nigga. Facts. You think I don't want to hear that? Facts. But I can't do it. <laughs> I need you to do it, my facts. nigga. And sometimes you don't have the tools to do it. Like, facts. Okay, what you want me to do? Real talk. So let me ask you. So how did? what was the moment where y'all decided to go from, uh, what was the original affiliates, right? Yep. So the affiliates was the label because that's who Willie the Kid was signed to. Yes, sir. What was the moment where y'all decided to go from the affiliates to Generation Now and the thought process of who was going to be a part of it? Because you guys have a big crew, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it became you, Lake, and Drum. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But like, how did you figure that part out? And then how do you handle when other people feel like, well, goddamn, bro, like, I would have put $5 on the table if you would have let me. Like, yeah, it's, it's hurtful because yeah. you have friends that you know them for years. But and you I, love them. Yeah, you love them. And the, the affiliates basically... Uh, when the raid happened, we yeah. split up, but nobody knew because we were so close friends. Yep. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, in around 2007, 2008, Drum was like going on his you know road. He was doing his thing. He still had his albums. I had to figure out who I was, and I went and I was like, you know what? When I go certain places, all the youngins really rock with me and what I do. You was the so one I, that they could touch. Yeah. So I was running with currency. Cool Kids, Asher Roth. I was doing all those deals and helping them get in the space. And that became the lineages of Dom Kennedy and Pac Div. Yep. And so I had a niche now. It's like, oh, okay. You know, even in 2009, I was filming mixtape stuff that hadn't been done yet. Mm. So I did Trapper Die with Jeezy, Trapper Die 2. He had two videos. He didn't even, like, he was like, oh, this is new. Come on, let's do it. Mm. Like him in the booth. Like, he wouldn't even let that type of thing go on because he's so private and how he is. But since it was looking in a space where it was like, man, this is brand new, we touched different spaces. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So so when I went off there, I said, I still need to learn more, man. I need to learn, like, what's under the hood. So, you know, I took a job at Def Jam, a VP at a and and, you know, titles. I forgot there. about that. Yeah, titles it worked with no ID. That's what I learned. When I was in there, titles was whatever. You know, SVP and VP, we all did the same thing. But anyway, um, when we was in there, um, I looked, I saw these artists, and the one thing we did was we was like, yo, we're not going to get blamed for anybody's jobs. So mm -hmm. get Sycamore, we're going we gonna to do Dirk together. We're going to do YG together. Uh, you get credit for what you get credit. If I get credit, it's cool. Uh, then me and Dion helped with uh, Logic and Noah. Noah did Janae. 
and we did Sean, Big Sean together. So it was a whole bunch of artists there. And you know, you remember the XXL cover, which it was like Iggy, Sean, the whole mm-hmm. Def Jam crew. Mm-hmm. I was amongst that watching it happen. And I thought that when I took a job that I was going to be able to sign whatever I wanted to sign. And Hell I would bring nah. the stuff and it was like, eh. It's like everything. You trying to sign my artist. You trying to sign Jaron Benton. I did. I you tried did. to sign. We were on the plane. I was like, yep. bro, I want to sign him. Yeah. Right? Jaron, uh, Iggy Azalea, ASAP Rocky, uh, the Migos. I tried to sign all this stuff. Rich Homie Kwan. <laughs> and they were like. I, they just passed. You know what I'm saying? They passed on lot. That's they the one. That's the, by the way, everybody listening, I want y'all to understand. Y'all be blaming A&Rs. A&Rs are just suggestors at the end of the day. That's right. They I are not. The and. A&Rs are not the signing. They are the signing once the, the suggestion is taken. So yep. who makes the final decision? The check writers. <laughs> the CEO, the president. They make the decision. They don't tell you how much the budget is in. They don't tell you, can and we can't spend that. They just say, nah, not right now. So everybody gives A&Rs flack for like where the game is. And that was back then. Today they have, like, dog, the, the most, the, I, I never said this, but I just want to say this. I remember growing up, coming up in the business, seeing Shakir, yep. seeing like A and R guys who are like stars, yep. and I dreamt of being one of them. And nothing is worse than you get into that position and then you realize you're just a glorified suggester. Yep, that's what I was saying. All the titles were the same when I got in. Your artists start going crazy now. They like they come to ask you more questions. They come to figure no. out. Yeah, but 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 even they, even that I want to say anything like that. Hell no, because even then you. they're like because even then in their mind they're like you suggested ten, we picked the one that worked. Don't ever forget that. That's true. So suggest That's ten true. more and let us pick the one that works and then we go from there. They don't give dog. A and R jobs is like to me it's the worst job in the business because they take all the flack and they have none of the power. What if you like really passionate about an artist? You gonna go to war like against your? No, no, you didn't hear what you. No, you, you you're not understand what I'm it's saying. Over. You're not it understand. I'm telling matter. you, like it, that don't matter. Number one, they don't trust us. So let Cannon come in with a friend. Yep. Now it's even more like, hold on, is he? Are, are they trying to make money together? Is Cannon trying to put a check in? You know, I ain't bullshitting. Like, is he trying to put a check in this guy's hand for right. them to break bread? Like they, they don't. Need, nah, bro, they don't. A and R's have it so bad because they have no power. And I don't give a fuck if you're an EVP unless you got a label deal or put, and that's through your label. But even then, they're still not, they might let you sign it for $100,000, but they might not push that shit. You know who got more leverage? Who? The project manager. And you got oh, the yeah. leverage. And if you get a project manager on your side with the A&R, if you come in and partner both those together, now the project manager is the one who's actually selling it to the outside people. So they're bringing in, they're like, oh, I see a vision for this artist. This artist will already explain the vision. The project managers are the most unhappy people in the music. Yeah, business. they're the most unhappy and I, people. And I want to add to the A&R part too. No matter what, you feel like you're building a resume, you're not. Uh-huh. Nope. Like if you think about it, most people will bring a talent in, they'll be the biggest superstar. And then you go to the boss like, and they be like, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do, do it again. Because the one thing they don't want you to do is start feeling yourself. No. And for them again. to start celebrating you. Because if you start celebrating, you feeling yourself, they know when your deal come around, your lawyer going to come in there and say, Cannon wants to be president and he wants a label deal. So they kind of got to keep you in place. They got to keep you like, that was good. Yep. Give us another one. They might even tell you, that was good what you did, Tamara, but Juju signed something for X amount of dollars and it's already that. So. It's yeah. all about control and, and keeping people in their place. And I want all the ANRs to watch this and get that. Like yeah. I'm watching so many people that I'm aligned with. Like I known Dallas since he was a young buck. Yep. Since he was and, your kids uh, intern. He went from there to Wale and Meek. And then they said, do it again. Then it was Nipsey. Then I was like, do it again. Then it was, it was like Roddy. Roddy Rich. Then it was like, do it again. It's like, bro, why I got to How many times I got to do this? Bro, but I ain't going to lie to you. When I'm going to stop and be like, all right, dog, you right. Can I tell you, you what right, this, you the right. music business is made of? Of people who haven't proven shit being in power of people who have making them prove themselves. Yep. So yep. like Cannon, who can, should be able to walk into any building and say, I want this. And they should say yes, has to prove himself to someone who's in the building that ain't done shit. Damn. That's so, real. That's the hard part. So it's like the blockers are the people that didn't do shit. Yep. But the people that actually care, like, dog, y'all broke. Generation Now has broken two artists in the last how many years? They're both going diamond. Yes. Mm-hmm. Both War- artists are going diamond. Warner Records haven't broke one. Mm-hmm. They haven't, Warner hasn't broken one in the last seven years since the CEO's been there. They ain't broke one. He ain't got to prove himself, though. 
they gave him the checkbook. But Cannon, who did it, still got to go ask for, yo, can I get a deal, bro? <laughs> partner with Am this? I tripping? You want partner with this? Yeah, you want, like, it's like he still got to ask for that. That's dog. Crazy. But that's why we're losing. It's like the police, they, everybody know that it was the lames. And now they got a gun and a badge, and now they want to bully the cool niggas. You know what it is, but it's like, what are we going to do? Like, it's yeah. like, are we going to change this shit? Or like, what are we going to let this shit ride, my nigga? Are y'all not seeing what the fuck is going on right now? Like, the niggas that act like, dog, Sha Money did the number one debut album in hip-hop history. And he has to go talk to some button pusher about why he deserves a partnership? Facts. That's sick. That, that's sick. I watched them. That's crazy that. to me, that's my sick. nigga. Like, and it's like my mind is like, we. That's why I said it. Like, I would never. I'm like, fuck it. Somebody got to say this shit, bro. Because the capitalists are just in charge, waiting to make money. And then you, got, I cannot believe that a nigga got to prove himself every time. I cannot believe that every time I got to prove myself. Tehran has the number one song in the world for the last ten weeks, my nigga. The fastest song, growing song in Spotify history. You think A and R's are calling him saying, "Why we don't give you a label deal?" Nah. They're not even calling him for songs. They calling him like, uh, I, they trying to tell him what to do. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. If you knew, you would do. That's right. Nigga, you That's ain't right. don't doing because you don't know, my nigga. That's right. That's the secret. <laughs> it's go. like real simple. There you go. That's real. Real simple. So, so, you, you, so you pivoted to tech. Yep. By the way, this guy's not, I, I, I could just imagine his team. I'm probably pretty sure y'all are like, Never bored. <laughs> Every day is some new shit, some new thought process. What made you go into the Tomorrow app and tell us about the Tomorrow app? Uh, well, with the Tomorrow app, uh, well, first, I just wanted to finish. Uh, the Generation Now thing was uh, us coming back together and really saying, yo, let's do it again. Yeah. And when I, when I brought Uzi, I found him in Philly. I brought him to drum, and he was like, let's do it. And, you know, it was a lot of people that turned their head at it is again it was the he got purple hair yeah it's like all right cool i'm <laughs> you know what i'm saying so a lot of those people didn't get a chance to make it in to mm -hmm. the actual company based on that and then you know lake was one of the guys that was like bro i'm in i see the vision um i'm trying to change my life and move into that space um but that led into as i'm moving with these newer artists and learning soundcloud and learning uh the independence of artists I'm starting to say, man, I'm speaking on these panels and everybody gets up at the end and everybody's like, how do I get on? And I was like, I gave him the same song and dance, you know, keep working hard, man. You know, God, you know, going, you know, bless you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And those aren't bad answers. That's not, it's, not, it's real. It's you, real. Yeah, if you're doing that and you, if I'm going, if I'm at the market and I have to do that same thing, I need an answer sooner or later. So in my answer, I was like, man, let's create something. You know what I mean? So I, so the tomorrow app was that creation. Yeah. It's like, Hey, I need an answer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I need an answer for when people come to me and ask me how I get on. You can do it yourself, but do it through this platform. Mm. You know what I mean? That's hard. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the creatives that we run into, they always have these issues of meeting people, getting to the right things. I don't have a producer. I don't have a writer. I don't have a art. I don't have a, a lawyer. I don't have a manager. I don't have an assistant. I'm yeah. in Jackson, Tennessee. Yeah. How do I get to Atlanta? How do I learn? Yeah. So we created a marketplace for that. We create a marketplace and, you know, we, we, went, we dialed down on each pressure point for each artist. So the mm -hmm. first was finding people. The next is, I'm really good at art. I get ghosted and not paid. Mm. So I need to figure out how to get paid mm. and not a 90, 60, 30 net receipt BS bad math they be trying to tell you <laughs> you know what I'm saying I, hate like, that shit. I never knew like a net 30 and you, you're gonna take 30 days to figure out how to pay me like, whatever so um we wanted to come up with that and you know the slogan was get paid as early as tomorrow and you know it All links right. the creatives and the clients together to do work without having a social aspect to it where you ain't gotta take nobody on a date in order to get you know what I'm saying you ain't gotta sure. look through a whole bunch of stuff I ain't gotta DM you a bunch of times it's just work related and when you get into that work-related space, it's, it, 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 it puts a discipline in front of you in order to run out and get what you got to get. What's, what's the difference in between the tech world and the music world as far as you could tell thus far? Um, t t really nothing. Like the, If I look at the product as an artist, the adjustments have to happen every day. I wake up tomorrow, Apple's made a new iOS system. Hold on, so I got hold, on. Bucks. hold on. You know hold on, hold on, he has to stop. Because <laughs> we can't let that go over. Okay. Say that one more time. The adjustments, I, you have to stress that because that is the key to winning in life. Yes. And if they don't catch that, 
Because they might be looking at you like, what am I doing wrong? You just missed the most important thing he said. You got you got to treat the app like an artist. Yep. And every, like, the God show is my artist. Yep. I, I treat it like an artist. I make my adjustments every day. 1, I try to figure out what works. Like, bring different people on. You're trying to find that magic. People don't understand that. Because they really think that it's like, it's, it's all about discovery and That's journey. Right. That's all That's it's right. about. Discovery is everything. And you know what, you know, with my team, they know how to make the adjustments. That's why I'm so happy about it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's like, you know, if I'm missing something, he'll call my man Jordan will call me like, hey man, look, we need to make this move here, here, here. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Then he'll, he'll give me another paragraph or yes. why. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay, so the adjustments are important. You know, you got bugs, you got people not wanting to use apps no more. You know, some of the guys 15 to 19, some of the women and, you know, girls are 15 to 19. Some of them show up without even phones. People are working off iPads. They get to Wi-Fi, call, and that's it. Some people don't even download apps. They go to the web. That's why you have mm -hmm. Web 3. Like, you know what I'm saying? People just want to open it up on the web and not go in the app and yes. deal with all the stuff. So you have to kind of, you know, focus on development and just know that it's ongoing. It's not just I have the MVP, which is the, you know, the mainframe of the, the app, and that's that. No, you yeah. got to keep on going. Somebody got in there, hit customer care. My app, my my password's not working. Oh, I can't see other people in the app. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with the app. Why yeah. is the app good for me? You know what I'm saying? So the adjustment, and you know, I'm more hands-on from the creative spot where I'm actually making it look great. Yes. And feel good and move faster. And then all these brainiacs around me doing all this special work that, you know, I'm like, how the hell did you do that? I need exactly. to learn how to do that. I think another integral part that you touched on at the beginning of talking about this is like you're teaching, like your if your demo is 15 to 19, you're teaching them the, the commerce of business. Like you're 1, teaching them that like when you're coming into this artist space, because I feel like what's been lost a lot over, our, especially in, in hip hop, we, we approach stuff with our heart and not with business and understanding business savvy. So. Yes. You're yes. teaching them that this is still a business, but you can sell your art and you can sell whatever and, you're and doing. And people of color. Yep. You know yes. what I'm saying? I'm black. Yes. So out here just having to go out and educate people is the hardest thing. Like mm. it's hard to educate people of age. They move so fast. We talk about kids like, oh, the artist, the kids going to love it. And I'm like, yeah, I believe in the kids, but the kids wake up the next morning and night, the next great artist mm -hmm. that fast. Yep. Then it's no more that person. Yep. So I'm just trying to figure out uh, in the education space, how do we get the younger people to dial in to just one idea and execute and, and, and but and grow with it, execute and grow with it. And I think that's what's happening now. It's like they move so fast. Like if I knew three years ago that people like the web more than apps, I would have been like, damn, I'm on the web three. Mm -hmm. But it still works because the app is there. So, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a lot of things that go on. And, it's a constant you know, journey. Of adjustments. And a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are unhappy because yep. they're so focused on the destination. Yep. I want to get to a billion dollars. And it's like, nigga, if you don't enjoy that three dollars you just made and and really enjoy it, how do we make four next time? Like, you ain't gonna win, bro, because you're so busy trying to fucking just like I mean, no, bro, every day. It's like sports, bro. Like, it's like watching a game. Like, we lost the first quarter. Coach gotta, like you said, let me make these adjustments. He's shooting from that corner. Like, it's adjustments. That's how, that's artist development, by the and, way. And spending your money on it, like an investment. Like, people don't know how hard that is. That's an, that's an investment. I see, I see guys like Isaac Hayes and all that, and they raise money. That's an investment. You got to spend the money on the product, whether it's an artist, whether it's anything. You just got to spend. You got to put blood, sweat, and tears and money. I don't say blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears and money into something you believe in. And um, I think that people didn't, I didn't have a chance. I didn't have a Russell Simmons or, or these guys putting arms around me and drama saying, yo, mm -hmm. this is how y'all do it, young bloods. Yep. I, we ain't had it. We had to, we had to thug it out. So it's like, hey, let's give back. Let's give it back to the community to where it's like, yo, I'm a teacher because nobody taught me. So that's the mind frame. But the I mean. problem is, I think what's happening now is our desire to give them the information is making them lazy yep. and feeling like that's why I think. I do agree, and I was against this, but I do agree that there should always be a paywall. Yep. Because it's kind of like, y'all got shit in your closet. You like, man, you, I paid $5,000 for that, bro. Don't fuck that up. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Because you pay, you value it because you know what you pay for. <laughs> so sometimes you got to just, they got to like spend their own money, invest their own money, lose, because that's the only way you're going to really appreciate what it is that we've done. Because we probably won one out of 10 times, that other nine 
we lost. Yep, 1,000%. But the, what we really did was we learned, and that's what no one is doing. They're losing and blaming. You can't lose and blame. You got to lose and learn. Then that way you come back tomorrow better. That's right. Seriously, like that's what they don't get. So I, 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 I love that you're giving that, but I just, I just don't want them to miss this opportunity. 1,000. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to say, like, like, don't miss this opportunity. Like, don't be like, oh, fuck off. Hey, bro, listen, the system is a system. That's right. Nigga, this, it ain't fair for none of us. Ain't, nobody right. in this room has had it fair. But That's what right. makes us great is we get the fuck up every day with a smile on our face and we do our part. Play the cards you dealt. That's yeah, right. Yeah, man. That's so right. I just hope they don't appreciate because I don't listen to you. I'm like, damn, every little kid in America should be on that. That's right. They all should be on the Tomorrow app. That's right. But they probably looking at it. They probably so worried about, I want to build my own tomorrow. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Or I want to. I want to continue to get ghosted on Instagram. Yeah, like bro, like or, or, or that's just another way. It's like bro, bro. Everybody sitting in this room is doing what they love with the hopes of making money from it. That's but right. you know what's you know what's interesting too. I, the part I like about what you're doing tomorrow, and we kind of dealt with this a little bit at UM. There's kids like these kids now, like producers, right? Majority of producers didn't have. They're like 15, 16. They don't have bank accounts, but they all know how to use PayPal. Why? Because PayPal. You have things like Roblox. You use PayPal. You have. Uh, these different Xbox, you know, by VCs, you use your yep. PayPal. Yep. So like, I think now as like having a business, you have to be able to pivot and meet the kids where they are. Yeah. And tomorrow's is doing that. You're meeting the kids where they are and they're able to pivot and create more things. for them. Yeah. And I'm learning more like this, man. When I meet some of these kids now, bro, when I, when I was coming up, Rappers was like, yo, I rap. And they rap. They give you 64 what? bars. Couldn't right wait, now. by the way. <laughs> right. Couldn't wait. Now I'm just telling people, like, when I meet kids now, they come to me, they head it down, like, yo, dog, I rap. Uh, they so introverted, some extroverted. So when I'm like meeting these kids, I'm like, damn, half the kids don't even like human interaction. Yes, they don't understand. They don't even know it. Yeah. Their interaction has always been on the headset playing a video game. So I'm like, man, how do I? So I'm, I'm like really studying, uh, you know, AI and like artificial intelligence to help people that just can't get over the human interaction and get into a space where it's like, oh, I can talk to a robot. I ain't got to talk to Juju. Oh, man, or Ray. Mm -hmm. Let me just talk to the robot because I'm meeting the kids. They not, they just, I'm telling you. Hey, Bruh, man, I, I, you learn, you, you crazy kids. part. Of, <laughs> you know here's the crazy saying? part. You learn more about them from their Instagram yep. yeah, or their TikTok. Yeah. Like yeah. on their TikTok, they get their real personality. I'll be tired of these motherfuckers. Yeah. And then the person that be like, <laughs> Hello. Facts, bro. It's weird. To me. It's Facts. like you gotta talk to people, bro. Like I learned so much. From, I didn't know my son like hip hop. That's right. Until I seen his Instagram and him jamming to Kendrick. And I was, I was so excited. I was like, yeah. you like that shit? Yeah. He's like, yeah, that why? I'd be like, it's nothing. I'm like, no, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you listening to the same thing I'm listening to, but they don't. It's. I, I think it's because they, they, they talk in text. That's, That's all. Right. Like That's right. text. Text and Instagram and tweet, and that's how they used to communicate with each other. But they don't understand. You're going to have to get outside. Yep. You're going to have to touch the people. You're going to have to get out there in front of people. It's, it's, it's unavoidable. Even if, you, even if you do it and it pops off and you come out, you're still going to have to come out. I remember this artist I was trying to sign, and this nigga was like, he was trying to cheat the process. and It was so frustrating me because he was great. Greatest demo I've ever heard in my life. Terrible performer. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting down at the table with me and artists be finessing. They, you know, they be can they don't think that we can't see through the finesse. So he's like, bro, let me tell you the plan, bro. See, the plan is, bro, I, the music is so good. I want to put the music out. And by the time I do my first show, it's in an arena. And everybody's there for me. <laughs> Nigga, you rather do all that instead of just focusing on performing? You don't think I know what you're saying to me? Nigga, get the music hot so I don't have to work hard and they can just sing along with me. No, nigga. Yep. Them fans want to see you work for it. They want to see you grind for it. They want to see you go from rocking like the Migos when they was rocking the cheap shit that was the, the shit that's in the mall to they went, they look good to us, but when you see them when they really rich, it's like, oh, it's it's different. Yeah. They Fans want to see you grow, man. They want to be a part of your story, too. They wanna yeah, they want to, like, dog, down, yeah. niggas take pride. Yes. I t you see, I said, I when I saw Jack Hollow video drop, the day it dropped, I hit Ken, hey, hey, he out of here. When he, so that's pride for me because because yeah. I called it. Yeah, you're that like, means I was there. Day I, I was one, a win. Kenna, you saw me. I called it right, like because that's, that's your credibility is all you have. So for me, it's like, bro, you got to give the people something to believe in, something to fight for, yeah, something to stand war. for. It's a lot of wars, bro. It's spiritual warfare. You got uh, social warfare, technical warfare. It's like 
everything is going on at one time and it's allowing people to be out of this just like this. You know what I'm saying? Then add COVID and all the other shit. It's still people like, you know what I'm saying? So like the the human experience has been dil- diluted so much, Everything bro. that we do as humans right now is on demand. Bro. Yes. Like there was a it's point in time it. when we all watched the same thing at once. Bro. Martin comes on nine o'clock. We all watching it. Now, you ain't watched the episode yet? Oh, now I watched it. I streamed it last night. Yes. Oh, for real? Oh, it's out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's online. Go. It's like. Tomorrow. Like, yeah. You didn't want to see the. the, the I was <laughs> just talking about this, bro. I missed the feeling. Like, so during the pandemic, I watched Game of Thrones because it was, it was, everybody was telling me to watch Game of Thrones. But I watched it all the way through. When it's coming. I missed the feeling. I <laughs> want feeling in music. The feeling was me watching a red wedding and having to wait the next bro. week to go watch it again. That I would have been mad the whole week. Bro. You see what I'm saying? Seriously. Bro. And that's where I'm talking about where. The on demand is really kind of like killing us because I'm like, man, I want to feel music. I want to have a feeling like I watched Fresh Prince. If it was one of them episodes where it was like <sighs> his continue. dad didn't love me, man. Yeah. Right. I had to wait till next week. I can like go to the next one. I'm like, oh, OK, I didn't feel nothing. I wanted yeah. to feel it the whole week. Like, where the fuck's my dad at? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Your dad, where you at? Yes. That is so such a pay, to, yeah, that building. Yeah. I can't feel nothing. So that's what they're not feeling. They're just, they can be like this. and on like, the they, like, dog, dad, the first, I don't hear Kendra Lamar. I don't feel nothing. Bro, I ain't going to lie. I don't, I, you. <laughs> I don't understand how people watch movies on their phones. Like, my kids would just be in the house like this. Like, how the fuck? I need to see a TV. <laughs> like, I need to see the I detail. What? It's so different now, man. It's, and it's all on demand and it's all at your choice. And then we wonder why we losing. And that's why I started talking. That's why I'm glad you're talking. Yep. That's why I say that because, dog, it's a lot of niggas talking that don't know Cannon. Mm. Nigga, Cannon, it's a lot of niggas talking that don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's a lot of niggas saying, man, all you got to do is this, 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 that, 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 and this, 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 and you're going to be worth $3 million yeah. tomorrow. And these kids don't want, and it's like, you need somebody real saying that's bullshit. Like when Jay-Z said, like, if it's too good to be true, it is. Yep. Like, bro, like, do the work, man, because you want that. Because the one thing people don't tell us about money, money comes, but that shit goes too. Yep. And I think we don't forget that. I think we forget, like, yeah, you made a million dollars last year, but let me tell you why you fucked. Because you spent a million dollars last year, mm-hmm. which means next year you need to spend a million again, yep. which means you got to make a million again. Yep. So you be thinking, he made $5 million. Yeah, he made it over five years, but he broke. At the end of it, because he spent $5 million, a million dollars a year. Yep. So I'm always like, the only way to counter that is to do the work constantly. Yep. Like, nigga, work, like, like, actually put yourself on a disciplined schedule. My life changed when I did that. I wake up in the morning. I'm at the office by 11 o'clock. I leave 7 o'clock. I'm going home unless it's an event to go to. Yep. My life is, I can get way more done than when it's like, I wake up when I feel. I do what I feel. Yep. I go where I feel. And I think these guys need structure. They need to hear from Cannon. Like how, like, how the fuck did you do it? Because they really don't know that you did it. That's right. <laughs> That's the, it's many, it's the discipline you're talking about is the same thing I go through. But I added some. I mm-hmm. added my friendship discipline. I added oh, wow. my, my time in spaces as a discipline. Mm. What's friendship discipline? So, like, if I'm hanging out with friends and we, you know, it don't go from the party to the after party to the... It go, yo, I came for the hour for this. I got a lot of stuff to do. Mm. Yes. It, you know what I'm saying? And that's that where you, you have to put things in disciplines. And people are like, man, he don't even hang out no more. He don't do all this. But I'm in a whole different space. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can talk for an hour. And a real friend, I appreciate that. Yeah. And, but I can't go to a space and be there five hours talking about Hell no. Tupac or Biggie. I can't do that no nah. more. Like, my, my mind is set up. So the discipline, I got to work out. That's first. Yep. You, know, you got to eat well. Yep. Then you can have these spaces where you can talk and have conversation, but it, it got to be good conversation. It got to be. It got to be surrounded. Time. It got to be surrounded. Yeah. What you doing? I yeah. don't want to waste your time. And more than likely, I'm probably being a sponge and want to take in the information and just having fun. Like some days, I have fun with my friends, but I can't. I can't sit there all day. Yeah. And smoke I and drink and talk about this and talk about LeBron ain't the best we, we and all that. That we gonna <laughs> you gonna get 15 minutes of that. And I'm like, yo, let me step up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I watched that from people early on in my career that had kids. There's something about them when they had kids, they had not no time to play around. Hell they no. came through and get yo. Listen, I gotta get to the crib. Yep. The kids. And I was like, damn, I wonder what that is. And it was that discipline. Mm-hmm. It was like, man, I got a mouth to feed. Yeah. So while I don't have mouth to feed, I need to figure out how to do that the same way till yes. I got mouth to feed. Yes. You know what I mean? No, the best thing that happened to me, I was talking to a mentor of mine, a white guy. 
and he changed my like he changed my life because when Shakir killed himself and when Chris Lighty killed themselves, I remember thinking to myself like, "It's no fucking way I'm gonna get there and do that." Like I remember yeah. thinking that, yep. and then I I got to that point and I understood it. I was like, "I know why he killed himself because it's pressure." And Pressure. the expectations are so high, but you really can't tell people it don't work like that. Yep. I know you think it does, but it don't. And then you start having people against you and then you get anxiety. So I felt it. And I was talking to a mentor of mine and he was like, he was like, you black guys, man. You black people. And no, no, no. No, see, I like that though. Tell me the truth. Yep. And he said, you black guys, you guys come from the can't stop, won't stop, no, never sleep mindset. That's why y'all are fucking stressed. He said, bro, you need to take weekends off. Bro, taking weekends off changed my life. Like, nigga, I don't, like, and the minute somebody called me, yo, I don't talk business on the weekends. That changed my whole perspective because now I'm like, I'm a civilian on the weekend. You might see me with a fanny pack <laughs> on, with my shirt tucked in, and some slacks on, walking with my kids, and you might be like, is that Ray? No, no. nigga. <laughs> this is Raymond, nigga. I am Raymond the father right now. But that shit, because cause you, cause you go through these realities, and then you start feeling this immense pressure, and you start realizing that that's fake. That's right. That's a fake arena that we all are in. It's almost like high school, where you, like, that's the difference between your friends and, the college, and your peers in high school. Your friends knew... What the real was at home. That's right. Your friends knew, That's yo, right. we struggling, nigga. Your, right. your peers, they didn't know that shit. You, so it's like you had to separate that. So when I see my friends, when I talk, like my friend, my, one of my friends would call me, my friend Boo Man, been friends since he was 12 years old. He'll call me and be like, hey, Charlie, what you doing? It's Monday. I'm at the office. You need me for something? Hell no, why you acting like that? Nigga, call me and ask me what I'm doing on Sunday. That's right. Don't call me and ask what I'm doing on Monday, nigga, because every Monday you call me, I'm at the fucking office working. That's right. Now, if you want to come help me work, nigga, come on. <laughs> but nigga, he called me at 12 o'clock at night and on a Friday night. Nigga, we can talk for three hours about everything. That's I'm right. with it. That's right. But bro, you, your goals and my goals is different. I'm trying to get to a nine-figure payout. That's right. Nigga, you trying to figure out what chick you going to fucking flirt with tomorrow or whatever it is. I'm not with that shit. Even this kind of, I, what I do now, this is what I would do in the studio. Fact. I just turn it into a show because I'm like, if I'm going to do this shit. This is a studio session for me. Well, hold on. <laughs> let, me tell you know you, let me tell you the crazy part. The part that I hate the most, and I've never said this, so don't get mad at me, all my friends out there. I hate when niggas call me to talk about what I said on the show. Oh. Bro. I man, you I really said that. Hey, bro, you think I got time to talk about that shit? Man, I said that shit yesterday. I just got the clip today. Nigga, I'm on a new day today, nigga. <laughs> man, you said this. Ray. Why would you say that? You mean to call me, tell me you calling me about what I said on the show and not know? And they want to talk, my nigga. They want to well, talk. I, that's what I don't have time for. What? I that's the most irritating part for me. Like, yeah. bro, it's not the weekend, my nigga. Call me and ask me what I said on the weekend. Don't call me and ask I, what I said. I said it and it's over with. You yeah, I, man, nigga, I said it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm a different person today. <laughs> I forgot what I said yeah, yesterday. Yeah, Can I have a yeah, question yeah. going back to Generation Now and the artists? Yeah. Have, you taught, have you taught your artists how to have, have boundaries as well? Which, what type of boundaries? Like, in the same instance, where as in, where you have a jack who, like, you have a certain level of success, you have, you have all these things going on, to where it's a boundary with family, it's a boundary with friends, where you have to create your own safe space in your head. Some and some, and I'm going to tell you why. There's different type of artists. So, in my mind, this is how I see it. When Jack records, Jack actually works from four to eight. You know what I'm saying? Uzi will work the whole night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's a different space. So s some I stagger where I need to be work-wise. But if I'm going to New York and Uzi wants to work from 11 to 6 in the morning, I'm 11 to 2. I got to go to bed. He going to be mad. I go to bed. You know, he say to me, you always sleeping. You always doing this. If you come to the studio and I'm on the couch napping, yeah, take all the pictures you want of me sleeping and all that. When you're ready to work, I'm ready to work. Thanks. You know what I mean? But that's where the boundaries that you're talking about comes in because different people have different disciplines. Last Wednesday, I went to Nashville to see Jack to listen to some music, right? He was like, I'll be there. We can start at 12. It's only going to take us 30 minutes. That's a different type of human, bro. I love that. That's a different type of human. <laughs> yes. I showed up at 9.30 in the morning. I don't know if they watch. Your, it's your watch. Oh, uh, yeah. Get off of there. Um, so um, I went there, and it was like 9.30. He call, we were supposed to be at 12. He called me at 11. Hey, let's ride together. He was downstairs at 11. You know I love that. Virtuality. So he was downstairs at 11. 
We drove all the way to the studio. We listened to it. He's like, that's all I wanted to do, man. I just wanted to get some knowledge. We sat and talked for an hour. We listened to music for 30 minutes. We ain't listened to 45 songs. We listened for 30 minutes. We talked for an hour about where he wanted to go. We had a little conversation about winning time and a couple shows. And he told me he read 30 books. Like, that's the space that we're in. And then I jetted on a plane back home. Amazing. I can't do that with certain some artists. I gotta be in there. It's gonna be smoky season. Yeah, but you know what else it is? <laughs> it's all, I mean? But it's also you. You have to establish. I'm not your friend. Like we can be friends after work, mm -hmm. but during work, I'm your supervisor. 1, I ain't your friend. So you gotta establish that because mm -hmm. the worst, the dynamic changes when they mess with a girl you might have messed with, or yep. they hanging out in the place you might have hang out. So now they start thinking that. We, we equal. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, different, it's different dynamics. It yeah. just, I'm going to take it to Uzi. And the reason why that dynamic was changed because he was so young when I found him. Mm -hmm. He'd never been anywhere. I took him straight to Atlanta. It's like, you're never going back to Philly. It's too much going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the worst city to be in. He came down there, and he didn't know what to do. He just knew that I'm riding with him. So I became kind of like the father, father figure. figure. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, our relationship is a little different than most artists because it's like, yo, do this. Okay, cool. Like when he fly, he might, you know, he growing up now, he doing his certain things, but he'll still be his dad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's really to him, it's like, yo, that's pops. Like a lot of people call me, that's pops. I go different places. It's, you know, that, that vibe. But that's a different set than other artists. Like, you know what I mean? Like Carvina, that's like the little sis. That's but but my daughter, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, But, but not only that, you were in a different place when you had Uzi. I was. You needed to prove, your, you. that was like, you was. are my Mona Lisa that I need to paint to show the world what I, I can do. I was. So that's why it becomes different. So now it's a different kind of hunger now because now it's like, bro, I like it was almost like we ate together, we lived together, we did this together because we had no fucking choice. Yep. But now I'm running two successful companies. Yep. Bro, you got to have them boundaries so they can understand because if you don't, like that, when people ask, how do you follow an artist? That's how. Yep. They think you're a friend. And then someone places the business in front of him, like, well, he's get this and this and this. And you be like, that nigga gets what? <laughs> hey, nigga, that's why I established <laughs> what I'm here to out. do. That's, right. that's why you got it. Because it's like, bro, I'm your coach. And I always got a rule. I tell Whatever. people, I got to like you when you're poor. I got to love you when you're poor. Yep. I'm only going to like you when you get rich. Yep. Because when you get rich, you're going to change. So, and if I only like you when you're poor, Nigga, I'm going to hate you when you get rich. Bro, I tell all my artists that <laughs> when y'all get rich, I'm not going to speak to y'all no more. And they're like, how? I was like, bro, y'all gonna change. Y'all gonna meet 2,000, 3,000 people a day. We, you're not gonna be the same. Nah. 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 I said, they can't, always, I, I can't Trust wait to me. show you I'm different. Trust me. And then when it happened, they'd be like, damn, dog. Like, I'm not trying to be. I said, I know you're not trying to be like that. I know what it is, bro. Experience. I've been here forever, bro. You can't help it. I've been here forever. You can't help it. Yeah. And then not only that, we their color. That's right. Well, not with Jack. Well, Jack, it might be different because he's a white kid. But I'm saying, like, you their color. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just so, saying, so. wear their color. So, mm -hmm. And we dress like them. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know what I'm we saying? We don't wear like suits. Them. So they don't see the separation between it. Like, they yep. don't know. And ain't no difference Culture between base. you and Craig Kalman. Yep. It's just he sits in that chair and you sit in your chair. But it's no fucking difference. Yep. But Craig doesn't dress like them. Yep. He doesn't hang out where they hang out. He doesn't. He, he's, he literally treats them like business. So you got to damn near do that. But you still got to. It's, it's, it's a hard dynamic. Super. Yeah, but when you Super. finally do it, though, you can't be stopped. Yep. And, I, and I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Even with my relationships out there, I'm happy to have a friendly business situation. It don't have to be super friendly yep. or super business. It could be both. Like, you know, Jeezy's my brother. <laughs> when he called me like, yo, 6 o'clock, let's go, let's go cigar bar. Then we go at 8 o'clock, we might go listen to some music. But that's that. That's, that's our relationship. Yeah. Yo, what's new? What we going to do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's the relationship. We don't have to over extend that part. Like, let's go bowling four or five nights a week. <laughs> no, we no. Go, right. We go to Madden City at night just to rekindle the work relationship. Yeah, no, no, it's no, like, no. hey, we know what it is. No, right. put me in a room. I know what to do. Yeah, right, that's, that's it, bro. it. Put me in a room. So listen, we have, you, Wait, you have I a question? I want to ask you a question. Right okay, I was going to gonna make so, it a cut. Um, you had mentioned AI earlier, and since you are a tech and music person, I do want to ask you, um, do you think that AI overall is going to help or hinder the music industry? <clears throat> uh, it's going to hurt and help. The hurt side of it is, again, the human experience. Mm. That we're missing the human experience. Uh, nobody's ever going to be able to duplicate my bounce. Nah. His words. Nope. Mm -hmm. His ear. Mm -hmm. You're talking. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not, it's always going to be something. But as an aided thing, we need AI for its intelligence. And by the way, it's just becoming AI now. Like we've been doing it. Our cars were artificial intelligence. Like I'm riding down the street and the helicopter knows exactly where my car is at. Oh <laughs> shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We know, we know all that stuff. When you call SOS in your wheel, they know where you at. I got a flat tire. They come right to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so phones in our hand. We did try everything. We they hear what we saying. It's there. They sending us ads. It's there, bro. They Still run. Shit. Yeah, that's, that, <laughs> that, that is every artificial. filter. Girls that's on Instagram and filter. That's AI. Yep. It's making you look like a different person. That's right. That's that's artificial. No, I'm gonna be a funny. Goddamn, no, George, no, George. I'm gonna be a funny. I'm saying it's AI though. It's really like it can make you. It can make you look like a better, a different version of yourself. Yeah. Now, I ain't gonna lie. There's people right now who I see in public, and I and I'm like, oh shit, because. <laughs> I, I only right see, I only, see, like, I only see them like, on filters. Oh, I, I would so, hate to be a guy because I would sue a female. Like, what? It, like it just be a whole different experience. Like, it would be like, who is that? What is this? Like, imagine you wake up the next day. Oh no! Oh no! One chick, I was like, one chick, I was like, oh man, I'm so proud of you. Lost weight, bro. And then she showed up to Atlanta and she was the same weight. And I was Yo. like, she, I, and I swear to God, been, no, and I swear to God, I swear. Uh, listen, <laughs> can I tell you? Can I tell you how ignorant I was to it? I really thought, damn, she got big again that fast. I swear to God, <laughs> God I did. And then she posted a picture that she took when she was around me, and I saw it online. And I was like, oh, shit. She's filtering herself. <laughs> I don't fuck. That should be illegal. Yo, that's crazy. You lost man weight. Okay, <laughs> cool. That's what's shit, up. That she gained that shit fast. You know, some people go up and down quick. Shit, you gained that shit fast. Back fast so as that's, fuck. That's the AI. You see what I'm saying? All that stuff is turning. By the way, that hurt happy. and helps. It helps online, but in person, this shit hurts. Like, that's nigga, right. that's not the person that I thought I was going to see today. Dude. That's right. You should not do that. That is not fair. And then it makes it uncomfortable because you got to ask them like, oh, shit. So that's not you. Never mind. Let me just leave. I, mean, yeah, I think I'm, the I'm creatives, too, like, think about uh, some of the guys that do the content for me, right? Now they've created... Uh, AI programs where Edit. it edits the stuff for you, but that's missing a character. But to them, someone's like, I need it for the workload. I want to overwork. This can help me while I'm doing this. I get it, but now you're missing. You should the to use them. That you should to learn from it. Yes. You're not supposed to let it do yes. it for you. Yes. Because I can't tell you what feeling is. AI still can't tell you. Bro, there's no robot in the world. No, that, no, AI, you know, AI tries to tell you, you here's what will go viral. Yeah, like, I have an AI program that I use, and sometimes I just upload a clip and just see what they send me, and they like, here's, and they'll spell the name wrong. Mm. It'll be Drac. And I'm talking about Drake. Drac needs, it was like, bro, they, <laughs> I don't even know, bro. Like, it don't even make sense, bro. But, <laughs> wait, hold on. But what about using other artists' voices specifically? Like, <sighs> it was fun when it happened. Uh, but, after a while, it's like, okay, man, I, I don't like to. I just heard a Tupac record, and it was like they made the Tupac record talk about the new uh, situations with them finding the murder. So, oh, and it wow. was like he was talking about it, and I was just, it felt weird, bro, because yeah. it's like we don't know what's going on. Well, yeah. I don't know what's yeah. going on. You know what I'm saying? And th it's like Tupac's really talking about it, and we've always had that thought process, even with Machiavelli, and it was he was talk. it was like, you know, you heard little things Shook in the shot background. Me. Yeah, you like, shit, let me get it out. Shook shot me. It's like, hold on, what? I'm like, what? what the hell is that? Y'all making up anything, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that's what I, I'm starting to hear that. But the AI is like, man, you making me say anything. Like, I don't, I might, you know. Might they can say, Cannon said, I killed someone yesterday. Right. And I, I, I'm i just frustrated. Then they're like, Cannon, this is you. That's not me, bro. Right. And then you got to go and defend yourself. That's the worst thing. Against a machine. Oh, that wasn't me. It was a robot. Like, you don't want to do that. The robot is like, no, it wasn't. It wasn't me. It was him. Ray, I got one more question before go we go ahead. into the game. Your favorite Gangsta Grill project? Whew. Um, I got many. I always say Trapper Die was one. Uh, Dedication was other. But the Pharrell one was one of the sleepers. Um, the prequel to In My Mind. I felt like that was the first time we heard Pharrell come out there and just rap on a Wu-Tang beat or just do different things. So I just felt like that was something that kind of Change the game for us. Gotcha. What's your so favorite Cannon was, production? Uh, the Cannon beat. And I'm going to tell you why. I did that record for Trick Daddy in, uh, in uh, Miami. And one of the things that I was doing was I was creating in there. And, um, and Trick Daddy just wound up missing that record. I took it back with me. 
Buster was the first person to have it. Mm-hmm. And um, it was at the time where uh, Lil Wayne was just trying to get to that point where he's giving everybody 200 bars. Yeah. And he, 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 Ooh, by wee. the way, nobody even heard the real version is him doing the whole beat. He rapped for three minutes. You know, Don't worry, I'll be at the studio just, later on to hear that. Yeah. Don't worry. We, so, just, we, we made a verse out of it because he was such an animal. We just said, like, bro, we can't let you do that. That is, <laughs> Bro, the rap might be over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, I felt like what I did with that record, it was special to me, too, because I was going through the transition of how do I make a beat for Trick Daddy? You know what I mean? Yeah. And my, third, my first thing was, like, make it East Coast sound and kind of bounce, but do Come On Ride This Train sample, which was... Miami, it was yeah. like bounce, East Coast, Hard. flip it. And it just, it was an accident how it happened, how I was chopping it, and it just went. And it was like, that's South. Come on, ride this train it was just not Miami. It was the whole yeah. South. So that's why I was like, oh, okay. You know, a lot, of, a lot of those ideas came from them. Like, even Go Crazy, that came from Dead Presidents. It was like they was walking through a part, and it was like, dun, dun, dun. I felt like it was epic. And I was like, oh, this got to go to somebody that got energy mm. and be epic. And I felt like if I'd have just gave that to an artist that was already popping, it would have coasted through. But I gave it to somebody that was on their way up, and it made um, you know. Mm, so right. those are my favorites. Question, just because I'm curious as a fan of yours, what who out there would you want to work with that would make you excited to get out of bed that day? That's not your artist. Wow. Like somebody mm. that you want to work with that you were like, bro, like, because I, I, I know how hard it is to be motivated. Because right now, you're just a scientist. Like, it's science for you right yeah, now. But, like, someone who you're like, man, I want to pull out the magic for this motherfucker. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go for the obvious. I'm going to say Kendra Lamar because it's, his brain is just, his IQ is top notch. Uh, uh, the chance to go back and pour energy back into Kanye when the world is taking so much energy from him. Ooh. That would be me being a scientist in the basement. I have no outside ideologies. Yeah. It would just be us and whatever he had in the room and he would get so more so much energy from it cuz it's like you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh but I, man, I love I love a lot of people, but it's some people that I know that call me like, "Yo, I need you." I will jump right up. Tehran is one of them. Yeah. Timothy's one of them. We started young. Yeah. And not just cuz this is their building, I'm just saying that these guys are masterful. For sure. You know, some people I just need to get next to, learn from, yeah, cause, share. Because the they feeding you. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like somebody who gives you as much as you're giving them and not you just pouring. 1,000%. That make, it's that's just what a you, lot. Yeah, yeah, like that's what I be looking for. I, I want somebody that's going to, like I work with Blue and I love working with Blue because Blue inspires Juju. I just pulled Juju to the side. I was like, bro, I love work because you inspire me because you see things the way I don't. And to me, that's all I want. I just want to be inspired because that's the only thing that keeps us going. It's, it's I don't want to feel like it's me. work. It's people that can call me. Yeah. I, if you call me like, yo, it's Tuesday. I just want to come over, just chop it up with you. I'll be right here. Yes, nigga. It's just shit like that. Yeah. I, I thrive off that. If it's something I'm not thriving off of, I'll put it on a schedule. Yeah, exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? That's, real. Hey, that's, that's so It'll real. Done, like, but I'm just like, if certain people to call me, like even Drew, like we don't speak as much, but if we in the same building and he'd be like, yo, I got this. I need. I want to hear it. I want to yep. sit down and What's in the phone? He'll send me records yeah. or whatever it was. I just I'm listening. It's not a scheduled thing. Y'all hear that for all y'all thirty year old rappers? That's cr- it's a it's a coalition. <laughs> it's a coalition called Thirty Year Rappers that's formed against Juju. Yo, <laughs> so, they be like, who is this nigga? That's you just crazy. heard what Ken is saying, guys. He's that's like, come up with that's Juju, crazy. up with that's Juju. Crazy. So listen, we have a part of the show. This is a fun part of the show. We call it making the cut, Uh-oh. right? And on this part of the show, we're gonna give you three options, and this is Cannon's Enterprise. And either you go and you have to choose one to sign, you have to choose one to put in development, and you have to choose one to cut. Mm. And you have to say it. <laughs> By the way, you can't say I'm a sign. You have to actually finish the statement and say I'm a cut. And if you choose not to answer it, there's a that that cash out right there. The Creative Academy is a nonprofit organization for kids. We have three kids from the academy that have actually won Grammys. Wow. So like, yeah, yeah. So wow. it's it's a um the guy that runs A and R for us. He that's his academy. And one of the kids, Digital Nas, did six songs on Donda, including Hurricane, the biggest song on there. So, you know, it's for producers like yourself. It's a program. So, you know, depending on how you answer, they might get, they might have to share a pizza. <laughs> they might get might Chick-fil-A. A we don't know. Me. We might don't be, know. Might we might get nothing. Tonight. It depends on how you want to do. Yeah. So I'm going to get into it, Juju. If you're ready, let's get into this. Uh, um, yeah, I'm about to give you guys, let's give, I'm going to figure I want to start first. All right. This one is good, man. By the way, 
Team Don Cannon. Ray did not come up with none of this. This is all Jack Dance. <laughs> I just need to make that known. That. So when I start putting you on spot, you're like, yo. I'm like, I'm just reading what he said. All right, cool. I'm going to go easy, right? So Gambling Huff, Dre and Vidal, uh, Whitehead and McFadden. Uh, By the way, if you don't know at home, these are, these are two, these are three <sighs> legendary duos, producers who shape the Philly soul sound. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a actually going that order. I'm going to sign Gamble and Huff. I'm going to develop. Oh, hold on, man. I got to think. About <laughs> I'm going to develop Vidal and Dre. Are we and cutting? I'm, I'm at the cut. Uh, Ain't the no whites. stopping. The- <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's a tough one, though. And, you know, and it's funny that you asked this. It's all Philly. No, no, that's what I said. It's hurting, that's bro. the whole point. Jack is yeah, Jack is good at that, by the way. Jack, Jack tapped in on that one. Oh, no, Jack be good at that. Yeah, he give me. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to give you a reason. Because Gamble and Huff, and I'm not going to make it long. Gamble and Huff, signing them, they did so much stuff. So, so I, can, Trey. I can be yeah. next to them and be like, hey, they can do Mike Jackson, yep. Jackson 5, Pat LaBelle. They did it all. They did it all. Then Vidal and Dre owned a genre at one point yep. neo, neo soul. soul so it was like the development of that can make neo soul go to neo soul rap neo soul rock neo soul the roots country. everything that came from that neo soul umbrella so, you're right. so that's a development space and the whitehead brother they was just great yes they was just great so it was like they're gonna be great without me so i don't have to sign them perfect this is a this is actually a good one by the way we don't just do artists we do everything so this is a good one the philadelphia phillies the philadelphia 76ers or the eagles Okay, uh, <laughs> the Eagles first. Okay, you that's first. The Eagles? Yeah, I'm signing the Eagles. I'm developing the Phillies, oh, and oh. I'm dropping the Sixers, and I'm gonna give you why. <laughs> <laughs> tell you why. Michael Rubin. Uh, when I grew up, this is this is a crazy shit. I was never a Michael Jordan fan growing up. Me neither. I was no, I was a Charles Barkley fan, uh, and and. Not that Michael Jordan wasn't. What no, they but said Barkley was, was a Philly guy, though. Barkley was Philly. I'm a Knicks fan. I'm Patrick Ewing all day. I, I, can't, I hate it, by the and way. I at wish 12 I years old, when they traded Charles Barkley to the Phoenix Suns, was the worst thing you could ever do to a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and, and no disrespect, you know who we got back in return? Sean Bradley. <laughs> so ever since then, the Sixers is like, they got to right their wrongs. So then, so then, as I moved through high school and I played in the same city as Colby and played on some of the similar teams as Colby, I was like, he's going to NBA. I'm not. Follow his legacy. I learned about the Lakers in 96, and I've been a Laker fan since. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since you said what you just said, we're going to go here. <laughs> Allen Iverson, Dr. J, Charles Barkley. That shit came in a real time team. <laughs> that shit, he switched one up so quick, Cannon. I do this one now. He like the uh, mad scientist over there. Uh, damn. That's a tough one. That is hard. So, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm signing Charles Barkley. I'm developing Ella Iverson. And I'm dropping Dr. J. Okay. Dr. J. 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 <laughs> Matt, only reason is because Dr. J. When when a different style of basketball came, in my opinion, he went and left it alone. He's yes. like, bro, I'm the greatest at what I do. I'm a Jet. Okay. Yeah. Man, Jack is so crazy for some of these shit. So, some of these <laughs> shit is wild. I'm going to go this. Willie the Kid, Gilly the Kid, Cassie. Cassie. Cassidy. The, oh, Cassidy. Um, uh, Let's see. I'm going to go. I'm going to sign Willie the Kid. Develop shout Gilly out, the kid. Shout out to you. So I'm going. I'm going to develop Gilly the kid, and I'm, I'm going to move without Cassidy. Shout out to you. I just love the fact that you shut with Willie. Yeah. Because Willie went like if you was in Atlanta in the early 2000s, late 2000s, Drama and Candy was going to give you Willie the kid. Absolutely. Yeah. We, you we, know, we, I, but if you was here, you was on the radio, you gonna hear a Willie the Kid freestyle like y'all push that, bro. Like, bro, bro I just love that you stay loyal. Two thousand nine, two thousand ten, he would have been right in the runnings with J Cole. And Period. Him. And I feel like we were so early. Yeah. You know, so early on it, and I feel like he's still going now, but in his space. 
But I felt like if we was there, it would have been Wale, Willie the Kid, J. Cole, yes. he would, Lamar. It, I it was, was too early. He yeah, was spitting was while while the street rap was really going, Very and you early. needed to wait for that. Very yeah. early, they both yeah. And he had, and not only that, what what J. Cole and them was able to do was they was able to carve themselves out of the culture. Like I'm gonna talk to these people over here, and go. they attracted that. Unlike Willie had to go behind Jeezy and Ti, and yep. and, and they're rapping street shit and melodic shit, and he's tough. spitting. It's yes, tough. It's so tough. it's tough. It's tough. That's good. Shout yeah. out to Willie the Kid, man. I, I, I'm good. just, I just, I'm just glad he's doing good. So I got one for you, uh, Illmatic. Ready to die, get rich or die trying. Mm. It's a fun game, right? Yeah, it's a fun game. A fun game. <laughs> I'm going to sign and put out get rich or die trying. Uh, that's the most commercial, street, hip hop, uh, legendary album. That had everything, bro. Okay. That had everything. By the way, this lets you know, the answers let you know a lot. Cannon want that money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Canada was like, yeah, art is good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, give me 10 million albums so they got 10 million albums. I, 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 I love that. If I'm not mistaken, I think I brought that up one, one, one show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For we sure. We're on the tape, guys. For sure. So, so, so <laughs> that, I, I would put that out. I would develop Illmatic. Mm. Uh, and our only reason is because as we learn more about Nas, the more broader his sound got. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. I still think Illmatic was his best album, but I felt like if we added two. You, my thing is, when you have a classic album, you have two hits on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any hits. There yes. were classics, but I didn't see any hits on Illmatic. By the way, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm only saying that because he's right. Like, sometimes I feel like the streets just don't understand what a classic is. Mm -hmm. Like, a classic is a classic. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, but okay, so and you're dropping... So I'm going to drop uh, Ready, Ready to, to die. die because I knew that that was going to be what it was going to be without me. And that, the, not signing it is because you're going to be a star without By me. By the way, I love his answers. See, this is why I love what I do. Because when you're talking to somebody, you can hear that angle. Mm -hmm. He can't, you're a producer, bro. You can't, like, you can't help it. Like, you're like, <laughs> I could be a CEO. I could be, but like, like literally, as you said, Nas, I'm like, damn, what would you have given Nas? Nigga, that would have been crazy. Bro, we just missed the, the, the tip, so pause, the tip of the iceberg just going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, watch that. <laughs> but yeah, I just missed it. Like, you know, he's working with Hip Boy now, and they're doing a great job of what they're doing. But if I'd have caught like around 90, by, by, by 98, 99, it would have got ugly. All right, I got, I got one. Hold on, I got a good one. I got a great one. What we do by freeway and Jay Z. Hold on, the uh, Meek Mill intro. He's gonna say just wanna rock. And then <laughs> just wanna rock. <laughs> you already know it's coming. I knew he's gonna say this. You already know it's coming. I knew this is gone. I wanted to go. Those are three Philly classics. All right. I'm going to, let's see. Hmm. Just keep in mind, there's some starving kids over there in case you want to just, you know, you don't want to yeah, get out of this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, one is hard yeah. for you because what we do. What we do. Uh, so, so uh, the intro, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sign because I know as an anthem, we all have to have those. Uh, and what we do is wrong with the anthem too. I would develop that. You know what I mean? It was a hardcore album. I would add some more commercial appeal, appeal to it. Again, just want to rock. I would drop because I know it's going to be something without me. Yes, it's going to be what it's going to be. I love that. It's it's spread across so many spaces. Like you got people in pop loving that song and duplicating what that is. You got country. You got Bad Bunny tried his hand at it. You know what I'm saying? You got so many people. So I know that it ain't me. But not only that, the part that I want to say the most that I appreciate your answer is is that people don't understand music is subjective. Yeah, they think it. They think it's objective. Like. Just Wanna Rock wasn't made for Canon to age you or mine. Yep. It was made for my kids. Yep. That's what, but, and that's okay, by the way, because that's, that's okay. why it works. It's okay. But just understanding that is a lesson for artists to understand that intention when you're making songs is everything. Because yep. Meek Mill's intro, that shit feels like you in church, my nigga. That's right. Like when that nigga be like, I did without an album. Like it's like niggas being that shit. Like I did. Like you, nigga, you really think niggas did? They really think they did something with Mariah. Just about like, <laughs> they really think I did you with Mariah. I said Nigga, that. no, you didn't, on, my nigga. Hey, he the part, did. The part of Philly, Philly, nigga, I'm on fire. You like, nigga, you've never been to Philly. <laughs> yeah, nigga, nigga Bro, what? You know, you know how that feels as a DJ? 
What? I, I was in the club with the best people in there. Anybody from Tom Cruise to Shaq to all the hottest rappers, anybody in L.A. I'm playing that record and I'm saying those words. I feel like I'm rapping it. Yes. I, that's right. And they're rapping it. <laughs> yes. I'm saying it. Like, I'm like, I turn the record off sometimes. Greatest intro in Man, rap history. Fine. Greatest intro. To mention all those and just want to add, all those records being classics from Philly to for Uzi to have that song next to those names without even having a full verse means everything. Exactly. Absolutely. That's a lot. Genius. All right, a couple more. A couple more. I'm going to give you a couple more. Jeezy, T.I., Ludacris. <sighs> oh, I'm going to get killed for this one. This is, they, these, you know, Shaka they watches. Shaka and Jeff watches. <laughs> yeah. They called me, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Ludacris hit me himself. Hey, Ray. Um, what? So this is non-biased answer. I'm going to sign Ludacris. Uh, and the reason why is because, again, there's a lot of commercial material. This is Canon Enterprise. We try to make the money. He made more material. Perfect answer. Material. Based on that, nobody can give me the answer because that's the perfect answer. The, I'm here to the get the money. Ludacris went triple platinum every album. The material. Um, I'm going to go with Jeezy on the development tip. Because there's so much more that we can get, <laughs> you can out, you, of you can get you face. out of the situation. Uh-huh. And again, Tip is going to be Tip without me. He's a superstar. He made hits. And he knew what to do. By the way, I'm he telling y'all. He knew what to do. There's no question about it. Y'all can tell. Cannon has had artist has had uh, uh what not artists but what they call it um media training. Media training. <laughs> this nigga is answering like a me- uh, it's no perfect. By, by the way, it's so perfect because no when you say it, it's like no one can get mad. It's like, bro, I'm I want to sell too many albums. I'm sorry, I'm you know disrespect, but yeah, I, I need to sell too many albums. And, you know, and it's just like it's, it's certain people like Tip has never maybe one time out of years where he needed my advice for something. Yeah, it, it, I, I can see that. Tip was always the leader of what he was doing, and that shows me that he don't need. I don't. I, I can't play that role. I can only aid. Jeezy is different. We have to develop it. I, I never heard Jeezy in another space on a Katy Perry record or something that he never stepped could, outside his lane. And that's, that's why. That's why I said his. That's why we said his project, his music aged better because Jeezy, you could play his shit right now, and it still feels like his shit right now. Rather than some artists, you could tell. Like when you hear, like even Hove, like for example, if you hear Jay Z record that he did with Babyface, um, what was the record he did with Babyface? Um, you always be my son. You could hear it and be like, Hove was reaching. Yeah, he but was reaching. Like G- we just did the BET Awards, bro, and we did the Gangsta Girl set. So Fab came out, everybody was going crazy. Tip came out, everybody was going crazy. When Jeezy came out, he had to start his. If you go back and watch, he had to start his verse over. Last time I checked, he stopped because he walked out there and he was like, "Yo, they were singing it for him." They would say everybody, anybody from Jim Jones to everybody stood up like, last time, he came out there like, last time I checked. And he was like, oh, <laughs> let, me, let me start it over. And that was like the energy. So I, I feel like. I went to the BT Awards and, I, and that's what made me ask the question. And Bray yeah. was like, I don't know why this is a question. I'm like, no, I'm no, no. You said you who's more important to Atlanta. T.I. or Jeezy. Atlanta history, though. We was in Atlanta and the, every, when T.I. came out, it was cool. But when Jeezy came out, baby, that building almost fell no, down. I know, but what I'm that's telling you is you got to understand something. Tip, if you look at an artist's career, it is obvious that Tip chased commercial success. Yep. And Whatever like, you like, yep. live your life. You knew, I mean, he might have had a what you know where he was being Tip, but Tip, you knew, was chasing commercial success. Jeezy never did it. And if he did it, it was like, every time I do it, I do it for my hood. It still was like street as fuck. It wasn't like, I don't even, has Jeezy, or oh, he did make the song with Neo. I'm going to say, how many songs did he, he made towards women? Club, but he but was that was on, Usher record, yeah. though. Like, I'm talking about, like, like him one, making oh, a yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. He's that. All right, cool. I got a couple oh, more. But, but let me add the tip, too. Tip, I hate it when they call him Jay-Z of the South or the King me of the too. South. Me, mm. too. I always felt like he was the king. Mm-hmm. There was Slick Rick and there's T.I. Oh. To me. My I favorite agree. rapper is Jay-Z, but I never call him uh, king. I call him the god. Yeah. Oh, so he's the guy. He's the, he's the best, and Tip, I think everybody Tip else is the that. king, yeah. bro. Like you coming from where he's coming from, you never see somebody do that, bro. Like what he's done and the legendary status and everything that he's overcome. He's went to jail. He had to deal with so much stuff. That's the king. They try to dethrone you. That's the king, not the king of the south. Let's not kind of let's not bring down his level. His level is here. Put the crown on that man. I agree. I agree. That's fine. King don't I, need no help. That's why I didn't sign him. Yes. <laughs> so, so, okay. I'm, 
Okay, Real okay. Shit. I'm, I'm going to do three more. Okay. I got them. All right. Next one is Busta Rhymes, 50 Cent's Nas. Uh, okay. I'm signing 50 Cent. Uh, I'm developing Nas, and I'm letting Busta go. And I'm, again, here's the answer to all these, and the reason why I'm letting them go. I love these. Busta answer. didn't need me. Yes. He never called me for advice. He came in the building and said, I need that. Yes. And took what he did and ran off and made a smash. Yep. And he's, he's incredible. Rap style, got all the hit hits, but again, he didn't need me. Got you. I, if I gave him a beat, he's like, I don't need no beat from you. I'm going to Swiss. Yeah. Oh, Swiss, you ain't got it. I'm going to Tim. Yeah. I'm the guy. Yeah. I can't help that. Yeah. I can't help somebody that's the guy already. Exactly. And Nas is like, you know, I have to develop him because we yet have seen him in a super commercial space or something where a stadium is inviting that rapper. Mm. You know what I mean? And then you think about somebody like 50 Cent. He makes great songs over great production. Yeah. As long as he has the great production, he gonna make I'm a good there song. to give yes. it to him. Boom. Makes sense. All right, cool. Um. I'm gonna give you one sports one, last um, and then the rap one. Right. Kobe, LeBron, Michael Jordan. Uh, <laughs> I feel like his team. No, I feel like y'all already, y'all already had his argument ready. Mm-mm-mm. This is a tough <laughs> question because I know you a Kobe <laughs> fan. I know that about you. I'm a Kobe fan. You gonna sign Kobe? Let's hear it. You got a little. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually gonna sign. I'm going to sign Jordan. I'm going to develop LeBron, and I'm going to oh. let go of Kobe. Whoa! I only ask because you're a Kobe fan. Yeah, and and the only reason is again, Jordan needs help. LeBron was a developmental process. Yep. He, he can go so much further. Yeah. I can teach him how to be a coach. I can teach him how to be a businessman. A general manager. I'm looking at the room. They, they, they're uh, like, <laughs> they're like, I can, I can do so much. Yeah. And with Col- with Kobe, Kobe was special. He, he took a little bit of everything. Yeah. And made his own. Yes. I can't help him. Got you. I can't okay. Help him, you know. Last he was one. Doctor J. Jordan, Magic, all in one. It's like, he, he didn't say, "Yo, can you help me be Magic?" No, Mm-mm. he was already that. But not only that, he he was a watcher of them, so he was like a student of them. So he mm-hmm. he. He kind of made himself great. He kind of coached himself to be greatness. Like it was like he wanted to be on that level, so he did it. And I signed Jordan, you know, the sneakers. I mean, listen, brother, I, 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 we one, developed two, the one, whole two, business. Three. I mean, I mean, four. I see four pairs he's right part, now. He's part of life culture. Exactly. You know? So the last one, Hove, Yay, Drake. Oh man, these those two last ones hurt, bro. Hove. Drake, Kanye. Okay, easy. I'm going to sign Drake. I just knew you was going to say Hove. I'm going to sign Drake. I'm going to develop Hove. And I'm going to drop Kanye. Uh, Kanye because, again, all these questions are easy. (laughs) I'll tell you why. He's who he is. You watch his documentary, you see anything. He don't need the help. Bro can make his own beats, rap, sing, write. Market, video. make the product, shoot the video, <laughs> make the merch, everything. Make merch, make Virgil, make Dancy, make help. He's his own system. He's, I agree. Where do I fit in? By, by the way, I just want to say something. This was probably the best one we've ever did on making a cut because what I like about you is that you know who you are. That's right. That's if there's one lesson anybody watching this to learn. Mm-hmm. Every it was like it was like. It's not even an apology after he said it because yep. he understands his position in the game. That's like if you say to somebody, like, what kind of players do you want to play with? I just want to play with great players. No, a great player knows I need somebody to give me the ball where I'm at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and those are the players that run the game. Knowing who you are is so important. So hearing you do that, yeah, I just want to take. Like, you know, just having beats for him and having thought process for him. Oh, we can market this way. And Hove is like the master rapper, but he's a conversationist. Yeah. He, He'll come say, yo, chill. I'm chilling with y'all today. So what you think about my new record? Like, that's a development thing. Absolutely. I, I always want that. In search of development. Absolutely. So that's why I'm my Before we get the there. credit check, because we got one more segment. It's, before we get the credit check, I just want to, I always wanted to ask you, how did it feel being a fan of Hove, 
Hope jumping on your biggest record that kind of launched Don Cannon, it kind of it dropped DJ Don Cannon and created Don Cannon the producer. And then to go through the drama that you went through with the Uzi shit, like how does that feel that where your idol almost for a hot second has to be, and I know it's not like that now, yeah. but like your idol really became your rival for a hot second. Like how the fuck does that feel? Uh, it felt good, but again, it was all it, it was it was all it was all tabloid. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because when you when pe the thing that people don't see on the internet is when you had a conversation with Hov, and he like, hey man, hey, you know, that ain't me. Yeah, we working on getting people in ind independent places. Yeah, and if anybody knows like he's that open to those situations. He's yeah. like, how are we working it out? That's what I mean about the development. Yeah, what are we working out? How we get to the next step? Solution based. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Like, yeah, if you're a solution based person. I'm a solution based person. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna win. If you're and trying to, if you're trying to take advantage of me, and yeah. I gotta protect myself, that's when it's become different. I, I have more problems with, you know, I'm not saying no names, but there's been albums I've been on over the years that people didn't clear their verses for, mm. and I missed out on the opportunity, the history, and the money off mm. of. Then trying to figure out how we're gonna go forward with. Uh, the next manager or how that ends mm. up because I know that can get fixed but there's been a lot of situations where artists didn't sign off on paperwork and I was in an MDRC deal and I couldn't get through my pub deal because the biggest record didn't get cleared because the person didn't sign off on it oh, not so, that's, so that's so well, that's like I've like, been, been, like, been there I've been there so those are those are more heart wrenching than that little situation you know what I mean and it was a narrative that was built up that people wanted people didn't want to see us have Uzi yeah, you know what I'm saying, and and it's people don't. It's crazy because I'm not saying everybody is on a hater side of things, but when you have that type of mastery and that type of knowledge of things, there's some disruption that's going to be had. Always, because they can't take because they know the machine needs and to be I, stopped. And I watch them. I watch them try to disrupt you in a lot of spaces. Yeah, and I'm sitting back and I'm watching. And I'm like, man, he's taking a lot of bullets, and it's comparable to what we take. We yeah. take bullets because of how much we put into learning this game in and out. And you either gonna listen, you're not gonna listen, or you're gonna throw bullets. And mm. that's what and that's what happens. And I felt like that was a bullet. So when we huddled up, it's like, hey guys, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna go to Breakfast Club with some contracts and show them how fair people we are and how we not uh, stealing money? Or are we gonna let the artists be the artists? We gotta we about to take money from our own investment and throw it in the toilet. That's the hardest part. That's the hardest part because they don't understand. Hurting him hurts me. That's right. That's I'd the artist don't understand. Guy. I'd rather just sit back I'd and be, be like, yeah. I'd say whatever. I'm, I steal money. I still feel. I can walk down the street and people are like, yeah, he ain't that. I yeah. Know. But, that's what, but, but to me, I feel like that's why I started shows like this because you need that voice of reason so people can see. Y'all not understanding that. I'm pretty sure you had to buy him clothes, feed him, give him everything he need, and then you create the monster that can uh, that can one day come back and kill you. Yes, sir. That's the risk we take. Yes, sir. That's Ooh. the that's the biggest risk we take is that they get in the room with somebody else. And here's the part that I, I want people to understand is that Cannon has two superstar artists right now. Jack Harlow and Uzi and Sonny Digital who's a star. star. You got you got so I got shit going. But the thing that I want people to understand is that Cannon those guys are somewhere right now being stars. That's right. And when you're a star, you get told everything you want to hear. That's right. So now Cannon is in Atlanta working on the next thing he has to do, and he has to worry about Uzi going into a place, and they saying, man, you ain't got triple gold diamond Rolex. Your label ain't did that. <laughs> now he's like, no, nah, mine did. So now he's pissed off at you, now, and you don't even know. Right. And your mind is like, that's what you want. I give it to you, nigga. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, It's like that's the hardest part of what we do is watching your investment go outside and hopefully not be influenced by people who are thieves. Cause my thing to you is where the fuck they were, where the fuck were they when we were building? That's right. If a motherfucker was there when we was building, bro, I don't have a problem with nothing you say. I don't give a fuck if you was the assistant, the girlfriend. I'll never trip on you. But if you came when the motion was done, you are a different layer than us. That's how you I know it's real. Like he just had a birthday and he came down here to work on a, a, a the Barter Sixteen, and for his birthday, I gave him a bottle of champagne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perry Jouet. He was like, he was like. Damn, I ain't got no Lambo outside. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I just looked at him like, he's like, yeah, I know. We ain't on that. I know that. Yeah, but my thing is and this. I was like, oh, but my, but okay, my thing I is know. this. <laughs> you know, he's just testing me. He every, a Lambo. Every, every label has superpowers. <laughs> yeah. It's just a superpower. That's all. Mm -hmm. First of all, hold on. We also got to say too. 
Uzi had a it was in a studio in Philly and had every parking spot taken with all the damn cars. Oh, yeah, and, but that's when he was learning as where it was coming from. He was out in the world, like he said. When you're a superstar, you take in any energy you want. For fun's sake, one thing, bro, your ankle socks is whack. That turns into, they gave me whack ankle socks. Yeah. That's Why crazy. they do that to me? That's crazy. I agree. No, we're going to find out. So we never have, who, yep. who's the person that's never going to give yep. me whack ankle socks? <laughs> yep. So that's, you know, and, and when you see people, just like you, the media makes this big thing. It's like, oh, somebody beef, you can't come outside and do that. And then you go outside and you see them like, Ain't that funny that they, they saying we yeah. beefing up? That's funny as shit. Let's keep it going. Facts. Cool. That's the realest shit. Make so, my money. So we have this last segment. It's quick. It's called Credit Check. And with Credit Check, what we like to do is, because a lot of people say give someone their flowers. Yep. I hate that. Yep. I can't do nothing with flowers. Exactly. Give me my motherfucking 1, credit. thousand percent. Just give me my credit. I can take what I, because you giving me my credit means I can go in other rooms and say, look, I told y'all I did X, Y, and Z. So I like to give this moment to give credit uh, to two or three unsung heroes in Don Cannon's career that you just feel like never really got a shout out or deserve a shout out? Whew, that's a tough one. Uh, uh, no idea is one. Love him. Uh, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. Nah, he doesn't. Uh, when Jay-Z says still spending money from 88, we always laugh about it because he's really spending money from 88, mm -hmm. but doing it on a level where you really can't see him. Yep. You know, to this day, yes, Snow Allegra, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, making some of the classic albums. Um, he's basically was what I was to Uzi with Kanye. Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel like he hasn't celebrated in that space enough. Like, he still has to go through, bring me another one. Yep. Bring me another Let me one. Let be honest with you, if, I, if you had to give me an option of a, one producer that I could sit in a room for an hour and talk to, no idea is it. Yeah. He's never going to be around him and not learn nothing. Yeah. And I seen him, I saw him pouring into you and I saw you go from DJ Don Cannon to Canada producer to Canada executive that knew how to build. I watched that. So I, I'm glad you yeah. said that. Uh, and who else doesn't get enough credit uh, that I came in touch with? I'm going to go Sunny Digital mm -hmm. because again, he had a hub here that he did not know what he had. Mm -hmm. He knew what he had internally, but he didn't know that every person in Atlanta came through his hub yep, and it was an apartment and I feel like he's owed that yeah he, and he's a giver that. so givers never get yeah he's a giver I love Sonny and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with one more special uh one it's gonna be Ray Daniels and oh wow reason, and I'm a reason I'm gonna say that is because uh when he had the office over there on Trey Burt and it was over there it was before that we were going at uh uh Biddy Barnes office and a lot of times managers get a bad rep and a lot of people run around and they can say what they want to say but what he's done with uh, Teron and Timothy and even Verse Simmons and um, multiple other artists is admirable from a standpoint when we fight that fight yeah. people always ask me Yo, this, that, and a third about this artist. I'm like, bro, do you know how hard it is out here to convince people that I'm actually knowledgeable and I can help somebody? Like the managers, again, like A and R's, have the worst title. You yeah, know, they are garbage men sometimes. Yeah, they gotta either make gold out of garbage, carry the person's garbage, or custodians to other people bullshit. Be a blanket. It's so much. So. Uh, those are the ones that you know. And the reason why, when I saw you, I was like, I need to come to your show. We could talk so much shit sure. together. For because sure. we got a lot of history. For sure. And it's one of the people I never had a argument with. Yeah. Not one. I didn't have an argument about nothing. And, Even and if we had disputes, it's like, it's a But it's never, a, it's something. Up something, yeah. It, it's, it's like that. And I think that just being around, it's just, it just brings me back to being in touch with family modes. And, you know what I'm I mean? going to tell you something. It was a very hard time in my life. Um, because I was always, I, I, I manage ghost. Like, I built mm -hmm. an, a multi-million dollar empire with two guys that don't want you to know them. Mm -hmm. don't, matter of fact, don't even care if you know them. And it was always frustrating from my standpoint because, you know, I was, the, I was almost the face of our movement. Like, I was the one that was out there. And I remember it was a point where I had, like, a really hard time, like, between, like, 2012 and 2014. And it was when old boy who has fan base, he dissed me online. And I remember I was thinking, like, I should leave the music business. Mm -hmm. And then I had a conversation with Mark Stewart, mm -hmm. 
Tricky's manager and brother. And he was he didn't know he was inspiring me, but he told me about Jay Brown. And he was like, you know, I've been, since I've been in the business, Jay Brown has been Jay fucking Brown. Facts. Like he ain't never been not been Jay Brown. And he was telling me, he was like, man, back in the 90s, man, Jay Brown had a bad reputation. Mm-hmm. He had a bad, he was like, bro, it was times where people really didn't fuck with him like that for whatever reason. And I remember thinking, I can change. I could change the perception of me. Yep. I, you don't think when you in it, you don't think like that because you, you don't have nobody in your life that tells you that you can change. You know, you just like, it's like if you're a thief, you're a thief. If you're a drug dealer, you're a drug dealer. And that was the first one I was like, Jay Brown had a bad reputation. And he was like, yeah, man, when I was coming into business, he was just a guy that, you know, you just didn't fuck with in certain ways. And to see what he became, that was like my inspiration for like, I guess the rebrand of who I became. Where it was like, okay, you got to start giving to more than just who you're with. Because when you're a manager, you're really just fighting. Like, my, my only job is to make sure that they're rich. And they're rich. So I did my job. And anybody who I managed, I made them a lot of money. But then you start realizing that this is an ecosystem. And when people see you as, like, a nigga that don't give a fuck about nothing but yours, you kind of get pivoted over there. And that's when I, was, that's when I got Chubby the job. Yep. That's when I started making moves. I was like, I got to start giving. And, and literally, this is the iteration of that. So to hear you say that, it means a lot because that shit was hard. Because you don't, when you're from the hood, you don't know shit. That's right. You don't know how to move right That's or wrong. Right. You, you ain't even, like, all I knew was seeing Dame Dash curse out Kevin Lyles. That's all I saw. And I was like, well, that's who I have to be. Right. And that's who I thought I had to be. But you don't have to be that. When you learn that, you become great. That's right. So I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, the credit. I'm telling you, bro, like, I watched it. And for people to know that it's people out there that's inspired by what you're doing. I appreciate I that. To, I wanted to let you know that because some people are going to miss that. It's and I'm going to see what the podcast is about. But one person I know that's going to know every ins and outs, of every paperwork, every part of the music industry, every part from mechanicals to sample. Bro, I could call this man if I want to, but bro, I don't quite understand this because he going to know it. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that deserves some credit. I sure. appreciate that. And, sure. and oh, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and I'm just, before Tamir asks the last question, I'm just going to shout out Malika from your team. Malika. And What's up, Malika? M- Malika is the engine why this happened. That's right. Because me and Cannon have been seeing each other and talking to each other. What we going to do? What we going to do? it. And when I saw Malika at A3C, it was like I was speaking to Cannon and then I turned left and she was there saying, we're doing the interview. Like literally, she was telling <laughs> me your talk. schedule. Cannon has to go here at this time. He got this time. So I was like, bro, I, I just want to tell you that that inspired me. And I know you're going to be something big in this shit. Real I just want big. you to know I yep. see that because how people, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I wanted that's to right. shout you out because that's what this shit is about. That's right. It's about shining a light on the new stars too. That's right. Absolutely. So they'll see you. Don't, by the way, nobody try to take it from so Cannon. Don't get on camera. Thank don't, you. Don't get let, on camera. Let, let's, let's, let's get to tomorrow <laughs> after where it needs to be. But Tamira, you go to the last question. All right. So this is the guy show, which stands for goats and underdogs. So I have to ask you, do you consider yourself a goat or underdog? Underdog. I, I did not. Underdog. I, I'm gonna tell you why because um, greatest of all time is a uh, is an opinion in my in my book, and we can argue who's who whenever we want to do it. But as an underdog, I just feel like I have so much more that I can offer the world. It's not about proving myself or nothing, but the underdog is the person to put on a cape and do everything you can do to help better every situation. So that's how I feel I am. Well, I'm gonna tell you a secret that we don't that we don't tell people till the end of the show. <laughs> You don't get to sit on this blue couch if we don't think you're a goat. And so, hey, so cool. yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So yeah, that's we're right. calling you a goat, but the best part about it is, is that every goat has an underdog mentality, 1, and that's what makes them the goat. 1, that's what people don't get. That's the mindfuck of the God Show. And I just want to tell you, brother, we appreciate you coming. Appreciate we want the entire sure. world to fuck with the Tomorrow app. Yes. Hey, Ray, we'll be remiss yes. if we didn't even acknowledge this either. Like, bro, I just want to give you the credit for being able to pivot in this industry like and understand nigga, three or four times three or four to times. go from dj to producer to label owner to now tech like you talking about pivoting Absolutely. money that's be successful at every single level and understand that. how and to navigate. and make it look good by the way because some niggas be pivoting and you could tell he going through some shit over there <laughs> <laughs> Niggas start scratching his head and shit like <laughs> yo so i was just wondering man like why you scratching your head he Real going through some shit Real so tough. it's successful pivots because <laughs> a lot of people pivot and fail that's right. But successful pivots. That's right. But shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to Toten Carry. Shout out to Yoko Vaca. Shout out to all the people that's fucking with us, man. We the shit has been climbing up. 
And we appreciate you. Like, subscribe, do all that good shit that costs you nothing but allows us to keep this going and give you these great interviews, great content, and edutainment, as we like to call it. Yeah, I'm going to still donate some money to Creative Academy. Oh, man. I was about to say, Kenneth said, them kids ain't getting shit today. (laughs) (laughs) This the God Show. We are out. We out. (laughs)